Henderson, The Rain King by Saul Ballow Characters, Summary, Analysis Hello and welcome to the discourse. Henderson, The Rain King is a novel by Saul Ballow published in 1959. The novel was nominated for the Pulitzer Prize in 1960. The novel was enlisted as 21st on the Modern Library's famous list of the 20th century's 100 greatest novels in the English language. It is a novel that blends philosophical quests and comical situations entertainingly. The novel has been compared to Miguel de Cervantes's Don Quixote. There are many parallels in the two novels. The main protagonists of the two novels are both around 50 years of age when they set out and both at times look to connect with their heritage. Both protagonists acquire new names during their quests. It is a picaresque novel with the main theme of materialism and greed while the author also explores the relationship between America and the rest of the world through symbolism. After World War II, America emerged as the world's strongest economy. Consumerism and competition for status upscaled the American dream. Americans were replacing the pursuit of salvation with the quest for success. The author used symbolism to express concern about the spiritual death in America. The protagonist of the novel represents individualism. He is an individual, a 55-year-old millionaire, going through an existential crisis. To search his self, he takes a flight from the Idlewild airport, the name suggesting the mental status of the protagonist, to Africa. The individual is moving from civilization, America, to its origins, Africa, from city, New York, through Garden Arnevi village, into wilderness, Wariri village, and ultimately into the sky, comes back home as Rain King. It is a coming-of-age satire based on the theme of existentialism. The novel begins with the protagonist's extreme sense of individuality, where he can think nothing but what I want, I want, I want. As he travels through Africa, his experiences with various African tribes make him a better person. At the novel's end, he can now listen to other equally authentic voices he wants, she wants, they want. He realizes that identity is found in communion. Man must live with the rhythm of things, for he cannot live forever against it. Characters of Henderson the Rain King Eugene Henderson is a 55-year-old married rich farmer living in America. He is the son of a successful author who left $3 million for his son after his death. Eugene is an oversized man, but despite his richness, he is not satisfied with his life. He has more money than even his eccentric needs demand. He wishes to pursue medical science and serve the people, treating the ill people. However, his first wife, Frances, always ridicules his idea. He has a second wife, Lily, but even with her, he fails to attain peace. Henderson knew his desire, but he wasn't able to pursue it. He began wasting his time in alcoholism, began a new pig farm, and tried to learn music. Yet, he failed to find peace. His frustration turns him angry and violent. Miss Lennox is the housemaid at Henderson's house. After her death, Henderson begins feeling guilty and decides to go to Africa. Charlie Albert is a childhood friend of Henderson. Henderson goes to Africa with Charlie and his wife. Romy Layu is an African young guide with whom Henderson decides to go to the interior parts of Africa. Henderson acquires Romy Layu as a sidekick much as Kixote did Sancho Panja. Villa Tale is a queen of the gentle Arnavi tribe. She realizes that Henderson is going through an existential crisis and tries to help him out. Talba is the younger sister of Villa Tale who wishes to marry Henderson. However, he runs away after a disastrous attempt to help the Arnavi people. Italo is the prince and son of Villa Tale. He is a strongly built, impressive and friendly young man. Henderson wrestles him with him playfully and Italo helps him in being accepted and admired by the tribe's people. Daku is the king of another African tribe, Variki. He has had Western education and Henderson realizes Daku is more erudite than himself. He understands Henderson's existential crisis and suggests to him 
that meaning and truth come from suffering and that one must face difficulties rather than flee from them. The Bunam is the high priest of the Variki tribe. He is the villainous character of the novel who is jealous of Dafu and wishes to acquire more power. Summary of Henderson, The Rain King Eugene Henderson is a 55-year-old affluent and influential millionaire in America. His father, who was a successful and reputed author, left him $3 million after his death. Henderson is married and has many children. He divorced his wife, Frankis, and married a beautiful girl, Lily. Despite all his richness, he is not happy. He continuously thinks of what he wants and how he can attain inner peace. For a long time, he wished to pursue medical studies and treat ill people. However, he was always ridiculed whenever he talked of pursuing medical education. His first wife, Francis, always made fun of him. He is overweight and annoying. Even after marrying Lily, he fails to attain happiness. He opens a pig farm in his huge house, begins tasting exotic foods and wines, and even tries to learn music, but nothing helps in reducing his frustrations. Gradually, he begins arguing and fighting with Lily too, often belittling her. One day, he gets in a heated argument with Lily and in his anger, he shouts so loud that the housekeeper, Miss Lennox, suffers a heart attack and dies. Henderson is shocked at his own behavior and he feels guilty. He decides to move away and plans to visit Africa alone. However, his childhood friend Charlie Albert doesn't let him go alone and plans a visit to Africa with his wife and Henderson. After reaching Africa, Henderson notices that he is not feeling the freedom he desires while he is still traveling with Charlie and his wife who often get into arguments. Thus, he decides to run away alone and vanishes without informing Charlie. Since he is unaware of the people of Africa, he decides to take the help of a local guide named Romilayu. Romilayu is a simple, sweet-talking, honest man who soon becomes a friend and confidante of Henderson. Romilayu surmises that Henderson is suffering from an existential crisis. While he is leading a rich lifestyle, he often turns self-deprecating himself. Romilayu and Henderson continue to travel in the inner parts of Africa for several days. They reach a place dominated by the Arnevi tribe. Henderson finds that the Arnevi people are very friendly. He soon befriends the prince of the Arnevi community and playfully wrestles with him. The Arnevi queen awards Henderson with respect and treats him well. She realizes that Henderson is suffering from an existential crisis and he does not understand the meaning and purpose of his life. She teaches him about Grun to Mulani, which means I want to live or man's will to live. Henderson learns that the Arnavi people are suffering a natural calamity. The pond on which the Arnavi tribe depends for their daily needs is infested by wild poisonous frogs. Because of this, they are not able to use the essential water. He plans to help them and solve their water problem. He constructs a bomb to kill the frogs that are in the pond, but the result is the destruction of the wall of the pond and the loss of the water within it. While the Arnavi people do not blame Henderson, he again falls into the trap of guilt. Heartbroken and exasperated, he runs away but Romilayu notices him and follows him. After travelling further in the interiors of African jungles, Romilayu and Henderson meet the Wariri tribe. When they meet Dafu, the recent king of the Wariri tribe, when they meet Dafu, the recent king of the Wariri tribe, Henderson learns that Dafu is well educated and has attained Western education. Henderson notices that Dafu is much more erudite, intelligent, and wise than him. Dafu befriends Henderson and soon learns that Henderson is confused and he is trying to seek the purpose of his life. Dafu tells him about the traditions of the Wariri tribe and how he became the king of his people. His father was the previous king, king and when he died, Dafu got the right to be the king. However, to ascertain his position, he is required to capture the cub of a lion which, which is believed to have the spirit of the previous king, Dafu's father. If Dafu fails, he won't remain the king. Henderson learns more about the Wariri people and he realizes that the Buna, the high priest of the Wariri tribe, does not like Dafu much because of his western ideas. Dafu treats the lion that his father captured as his friend, 
which the Bunam opposes. King Dafu attempts to help Henderson move past the suffering he carries with him by having him spend time with a lion named Arti. Henderson is to tr try to be like the lion. The king also explains to Henderson that people's inner and outer appearances are intertwined and that their characteristics and emotions are shown physically. The Boonam opposes Dafu, allowing Henderson go near the lion. One day, Henderson unknowingly lifts up a huge and heavy idol of Shunga, the rain goddess. The Varini people consider it a divine act and begin respecting Henderson. Even the Boonam begins to praise him and attempts to use Henderson as a way to manipulate the king. Henderson sides with Dafu. With the help of the queen's mother, the Boonam forces Dafu to expedite his task of capturing the cub of the lion. But when Dafu goes to the jungle to catch the cub, the Boonam hideously tempers his weapons. When Dafu faces the lion pride, he falls short of weapons and gets killed. Since Henderson had lifted the Shunga, Wariri people invite him to be their king, but he realizes that the Boonam planned for the death of Dafu and he decides to run away from Wariri people. He departs with Romilayu and a lion cub, which in the tradition of the Wariri tribe has the spirit of Dafu. During the journey back home, Henderson provides care for an orphan boy he finds traveling unaccompanied. He comes to the realization that true relationships must stem from love. He returns to America and meets his wife Lily as a changed person. He then decides to begin training to become a doctor. So this is it for today. We will continue to discuss the history of American English post-modern literature. Please stay connected with the discourse. Thanks and regards.